Hello viewers, welcome to yet another episode of your popular program, The Environment Today. On this edition of the program, we'll be looking at the challenges of biodiversity in Nigeria. And my guest is the Conservator General of the Nigerian National Park Service, Dr. Ibrahim M. Goni. Dr. Goni, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Elijah Liu. Thank you. Yes. Uh, let, let me start by uh, congratulating you on your reappointment by Mr. President for another tenure of office. Thank you very much. Having heard that you know, uh, reappointment, are there things that you, you want to uh, do differently from what you did in the past five years? And all, are there new innovations that we want to introduce? Yes. Viewers, thank you for hooking on to this uh, channel. And uh, I'm happy to be here to talk about the Nigerian biodiversity. Like you have said, the reappointment is actually an encouragement to me. And uh, being an encouragement, I, apart from doing things differently, I also want to improve on those things that I've done before. Okay. So like you have said, or like you want to know, I am going to do a lot of things different from the ways I've done them in the past in order to be able to achieve my vision for the service. Okay, yeah, maybe we should take it from this uh, one that is a critical aspect of your mandate. Yeah. Uh, for some time, there have been issues around the depletion of our forest, including, you know, illegal uh, tree felling, you know, tree logging, and uh, of course, the poaching on the animals. How do you intend to uh, confront these challenges? Yes, thank you very much. The issue of uh, illegal tra wildlife uh, trafficking or the issue of illegal hunting, illegal logging, mm. and of course, the issue of even illegal settlements in our conserved and protected areas. Okay. It's a critical one. And uh, the conserve and, prote and the protected areas are in three categories. Okay. We have the forest reserves, we have the game reserve, we have the national parks. The forest and game reserves are the pro uh, prerogative of the state governments. Okay. Why the national park is the prerogative of the federal government. And the National Park is saddled with the mandate to conserve and protect the biodiversity in the National Park. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the issue of illegal wildlife exploitation mm. lies with the states and the federal government. And uh, in most states now, the forests and game reserves mm. have become very more devastated mm -hmm. to the extent of some just existing on just on the paper. You read something about a protected reserve, a conserved area in, in, in a state. Mm -hmm. Go to that state. It has either become a farm settlement, a highway, or an estate. Mm -hmm. So that way you can see that the depletion is even greater. Then you, these areas are areas that the state government are supposed to manage on a sustainable basis. Mm. Because the edict establishing those areas allows some minimal human activities okay. in the sense that if you are to go hunting, the law specify that some categories of animals can be hunted by you. 
but you have to get the permit okay. from either the state government or the local government. Mm. But all these things we have thrown away. So that is why it has not been a sustainable something again, okay. a sustainable management again. Mm. Then you come to the national park, which is the higher category or highest category of uh, protected area or conserved area management. Okay. The national parks all over are managed in such a way that human activity is also allowed on a minimal scale. Because when you say conservation, mm -hmm. you are not saying preservation. Mm -hmm. When you preserve, you don't utilize at all. But when you conserve, you are going into sustainable management of that resource whereby you allow minimum utilization yeah. by the people surrounding that area and mm -hmm. even that might come elsewhere mm -hmm. to utilize that place. That is why you have aspects of ecotourism. Mm -hmm. Under the ecotourism, you allow visitors to come under guidance to view the resources there. It may be animals, it may be plants, it may be any type of species, vertebrate or invertebrate. Okay. Then you also allow some level of uh, minimal utilization of the resources by the surrounding communities. Mm -hmm. That is why you have buffer zones. Mm -hmm. You now create buffer zones where you introduce integrated management by the service and the communities. If there are springs there, if there are rivers there, if there are, they want the plan for their uh, traditional use, yes. or they have their shrines there, you work out modalities where the people can utilize those resources so that the resources are not just locked completely. Mm -hmm. Coming back to the issue of uh, deforestation, yeah. logging and the rest of them, there are various agencies saddled with different types of responsibility. Okay. Like in the national parks, our law provides that an animal or plant that is outside the boundaries of the national park mm. by one inch is not the property of the federal government. Okay. So it means any animal and plant that is within the national park is the mm. property of the federal the government. Federal, okay. One inch after that boundary becomes the property of the state where that resource is located. Okay. So in order to be able to handle such inhuman activities, mm. the federal government has uh, established agencies like NESRA, the National Environmental Standard Regulation Agency. Mm -hmm. You also have uh, departments, like Federal Department of Forestry. Yeah. They are role like I've told you, the, the only forest estate or wildlife estate is, that of, is the national park owned by the federal government. Yeah. Outside that, it's so the federal true. Department of Forestry and the Federal Ministry of Environment mm. now plays the role of advocacy. Okay. Advocacy with the states, with the local government. Mm. Whereas, this, the, whereas NESRA, mm. as an agency of the Ministry of Environment, has the mandate to enforce compliance mm. with environmental laws, mm. whether states or federal. Mm. You are, NESRA is supposed to enforce these laws. Okay. So in other words, deforestation, logs moving along a highway, uh, wildlife animal trophies moving along our highways, wildlife trophies, uh, wildlife animals you, you see being hawked around. Mm. I suppose uh, it, that is purely the mandate of NESRA to enforce that regulation to make sure that the activities of these people is checked mm -hmm. and reduced to the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, given the uh, seeming overlap yeah. between the mandate of your uh, agency and some of the state's government yeah. where you have the forest uh, reserves and all that, yes. uh, what is the level of relationship between your agencies and some of these uh, government, uh, you know, state governments around? The relationship is that of uh, 
a collaboration. Okay. Because when Federal Department of Forest, Forestry is determined to play an over advocacy role, mm. we are always part of that advocacy role. When NESRA intends to go on enforcement, the Nigerian Police Force is involved, mm. the National Park Service in, is involved. Mm. So that is why I say the relationship is that of a collaboration. Mm. So because we come together to ensure that we enforce these things. Mm. Because you never can tell mm. some of these traffic items could be from the National Park. Yeah. But the way it leaves the mm. shores of the National Park, Mm. It is no longer the mandate of the National Park. So mm. in coming together to enforce this, the suspect is, co is questioned, mm. what is the source? Yeah. If it is in the National Park, then that suspect is handed over to the National Park for prosecution. Okay. But if it is outside the National Park, whether in a game reserve or a forest or a free range, mm. National Park, and, and NESRA has that mandate to enforce its law. Mm -hmm. Because... NEZRA is saddled with uh, this convention, Nigeria Science, that is the Convention on Illegal Trade okay. in Wildlife Species of Plant and Animal, CITES. Mm. So it is directly under NEZRA, and NEZRA enforces that act. Okay. In the public domain, when, when the masses, uh, I mean, come across somebody uh, selling so, some of those conserved, you know, items, yeah. items that are supposed to be at the national park, for instance. Yes. The general perception is that, look, I mean, there is usually con con I mean, complicity of either your staff in allowing people to come into the national park to kill the animals and, you know, walk away or to, to do some of those uh, logging. How, how, are you able to monitor that kind of uh, activities going on at the, at the park? Well, I believe individuals are entitled to their, to their opinion. Mm -hmm. You cannot change an individual's opinion. Yes. And you cannot change his perception. Mm -hmm. But to raise the issue of complicity, mm -hmm. of complacency of my staff in checking these activities, mm -hmm. I beg to differ okay. because if there's any agency that uh, is up and doing as far as wildlife trafficking is concerned, okay. I think National Park is one. Okay. Because despite the fact that the land area is huge, it's mm -hmm. massive, yeah. and you, we do not have enough manpower to place every ranger mm. in all the places. Like in the savannah, we are supposed to have one ranger per 10 square kilometer. Okay. In the forest, we are supposed to have one ranger per five square kilometer. Mm -hmm. And the ranger must be fully kitted mm. with GPS, mm. uh, commun yeah. communication equipment. He's uh, uh, something he used to defend himself, the, yeah. the, his, his arm. Mm. And any other thing that will help in detecting any crime. Yeah. So, though we are here to reach that standard, mm. but we have to also employ technology. Mm -hmm. So with the use of technology, like the drone, we are able to gather enough intelligence. Mm. And this has even led us, the drones, the camera traps, and uh, even uh, server, track, server trackers. We have used the camera trap to trace a illegal hunter to his house mm. and arrested him because the camera captured him. Well, he was there. And after analyzing, asking questions, we are able to trace such invader to his house, get him arrested. And he faces prosecution. Yeah. So, uh, uh, in, so in to other say words, that, uh, yes. there's complicity. Mm. That's why I said the difference. Well, it's, it's good you clarify, you know, because. Uh, Certainly, some of those activities, I mean, just you, as you said, you, you don't have enough manpower. Yeah. And uh, protecting or preserving the entire huge landscape that we have under the National Park is, is a big, uh, you know, responsibility. Yes. Uh, that leads me to the uh, other question about globally. Yeah. Uh, there is what they call the best practices in terms of 
biodiversity protection. You started by talking about the issue of uh, the use of technology. Technology. Yeah. How well grounded are we in that aspect in using technology to protect, uh, you know, biodiversity? Yes, we are. Even in the establishment of uh, national parks, Nigeria is a new arrival. Other countries have established their national park about 70, 50, 80 years ago. Mm -hmm. National parks in Nigeria are just about three and a half decades, 35 years. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, for us to even have been able to arrive at this level, I think the federal government deserves to be commended okay. for the effort in trying to catch up with those countries that are ahead of us. So the issue of introducing technology, we are not well grounded because we do not even have the, we do not even have enough drums, mm. drones to be able to pass through everywhere. Okay. So the drones we have are drones that we share among the parks. Mm. It goes to this park today, maybe in the next one month, goes to another, another park. park. But however, our our mandate mm. is aggressively being pursued. Mm. So, and uh, we are also trying to go further, mm. even beyond the drums, by trying to acquire an, a, a, a helicopter mm. this year by the grace of God mm -hmm. that we have in our budget. And uh, money has started being released, and by the grace of God, when the procurement process is completed, yeah. we are sure to acquire a helicopter. It's okay. not only going to be used for uh, intelligent gathering, mm. conveying rangers where, they, where there are uh, needs. It is also going to be used in conveying tourists. So it's going to be put to so many use. Okay. And by using it to convey tourists, you are in another, another way, trying to recoup mm. the money that has been spent in acquiring it. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. You. Uh, dear viewers, uh, we'll have a short break. Then when we come back, we'll continue with uh, my guest here. Thank you. Welcome back. I have been speaking with the Conservator General of the National Park Service uh, of Nigeria, uh, Dr. Ibrahim M. Goni. So we'll continue from where we stopped. Uh, Dr. Goni, let uh, me say that uh, you, what you are doing is, is a big assignment you know, on behalf of this nation. Yeah. Uh, recently, there was a legislation that has to do with the protection of uh, the uh, biodiversity, uh, if, I, if, I, if I'm right. Uh, has there been of any help uh, yet in terms of ensuring that uh, uh, the service is uh, enhanced in terms of uh, protecting these uh, uh, natural resources we have? Well, let me ask this question. Which legislation? Which uh, no, the, the one that uh, speaks about 
uh, protection of uh, the endangered species. Okay, that is the convention. Yeah, the convention. International trade. Yes. Eh? Yeah. International trade. In the Convention on International Trade in Illegal Trafficking of Wild Flora and Fauna. Yes. Yes. That, uh, an, ed, that an act that was reviewed and Mr. President signed in 2016. Okay. And that act has actually given the law enforcement agencies, particularly NEZRA, that mm. is supposed to enforce that act and impetus. Okay. Because it has broadened their scope of activities mm -hmm. and it has also reviewed the penalties. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, this is why, even in the, at the international level, mm -hmm. you can see that about 1995 or 1997, Nigeria was suspended from CITES. But with the review of the act, Nigeria was brought back. Okay. And Nigeria is today trying to ensure that it lives up to that international expectation. Mm. So it has actually given an impetus to NEZRA. Okay. Not only NEZRA, mm. the scientific decks, like the National Parks and the Federal Ministry of uh, Environment, too, they are the scientific decks for this act, mm. whereas NEZRA enforces the act. Mm -hmm. And like I've, you have asked the relationship, I've told you it's a collaborative thing. Mm -hmm. And with this collaboration, with, with the review of the act, the Nigerian police force is now brought in okay. to support NEZRA in enforcing the, the act. So the review of the act has actually helped Nigeria in trying to at least monitor about the particularly in the area of illegal trafficking. Mm -hmm. And the support of the National Nation Office on Drug, mm -hmm. UNODC, okay. that is also an effort of government to collaborate with this United Nations organization to be able to improve on wildlife uh, trafficking. The United Nations Office for Drug and Crime yeah. has assisted in no small way. It has trained personnel. It is also reviewing the strategy as far as wildlife crime is concerned. Okay. So the signing of the act is actually an impetus. Okay. Uh, uh, quickly, the new dimension on conservation. Yes has to do with uh, marine you know, conservation, which also falls within the broad, as, uh, the broad issue of uh, blue economy. Uh, your agency has been doing conservation, possibly of the land and you know, uh, other spaces. Are you thinking of going into marine conservation? And what are your plans if, if you are? Nigeria has just joined the League of Nations that have established marine national parks. Okay. In 2020, mm. Mr. President approved 10 new additional national parks. Mm. And amongst these 10 new additional national parks, there are two marine national parks in Baeza State. Okay. We have Edumon, Edu, Edumeno National Park and Apoi National Parks. So, the, uh, uh, the establishment of these two national parks mm -hmm. means that Nigeria has joined the League of Nations that have established marine national parks. So apart from the green energy, mm -hmm. Nigeria is also trying to diversify mm -hmm. in exploring the blue energy or blue economy. And by that, the fishing skills, the fishing methods, the management of the marine landscape will have to change. And the issues of piracy on the high sea and the rest of them, this is what the establishment of these two national parks is intended to check, particularly piracy mm. at the high sea, where our fishermen are robbed of their resources, mm. they are killed, and some are men. So 
going into this is an effort towards trying to minimize the insecurity around that area so that our fishermen can improve their skill and be able to fish, if not enough for the country, but at least reasonably mm. to be able to review, to, re to re reduce the deficit. Because right now, Nigeria is in, as far as fisheries is concerned, we are in deficit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there any uh, expectation of the kind of uh, contribution the marine conservation can add to the GDP of Nigeria? I mean, uh, you the, have... Uh, this is what I told you about the blue economy. Okay. With the blue economy, you have millions of dollars lying down there. Okay. You are keen into it. Okay. And you are sure to get uh, international assistance. Mm -hmm. Like I've told you about the United Nations Office for yes. Drug and Crime. Okay. If you look at what they are spending now in training, yeah. our wildlife personnel, as far as illegal trafficking is concerned, it's no small money. Okay. That has complement government effort. Okay. They are also giving uh, our personnel mm -hmm. the needed strategy. They are going to produce the needed strategy for mm -hmm. the country to implement. Okay. So by going into this exploration of the blue economy, we are sure, one, to diversify, and two, to improve. Yeah. And uh, this is all geared towards uh, the 100 million people Niger Mr. President said he wants to get out of poverty. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Goni, for thank, thank being uh, our guest on thank this uh, episode of uh, the program. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, next time when we have a call to call you, you gladly accept. I'll our be here message. running with all pleasure. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Uh, dear viewers, uh, we would like to draw the curtain uh, on the program at this uh, juncture. Uh, we want to thank you for uh, joining us. And uh, next time when we bring you uh, another interesting personality and uh, episode. Uh, do have a wonderful day. Thank you.